So first, um, I'd like you to welcome uh, Miguel Gamino from the city of San Francisco to the stage, please. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, everybody. First and foremost, I want to welcome you to the innovation capital of the world, San Francisco. So I, I hope you're enjoying the cool weather today. I heard that it, I was out of town, but I heard that it was pretty warm the last couple of days, and I'm not sure if I uh, was glad that I missed it or glad that I'm back while it's cool. But and nonetheless, thank you for, um, to the WBA, and thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Uh, thanks for having this event here in our great city, and I hope you not only enjoy the content, but also uh, enjoy the city while you're here. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the, the general reasons why um, Wi-Fi is so important and what we're doing here in San Francisco. And then I have a, a commercial that I'll run uh, in a second. But what we've done with um, our SF Wi-Fi brand, and I know you heard a little bit about this yesterday from my CTO, Flavio, but we've, we've really connected some very key cornerstone uh, corridors and area public spaces in the city. And that's to bring uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and broadband connectivity in general to the public in places where they can use it and make access uh, meaningful to them in their own lives. Um, we maintain this system as a public service and you'll hear in the video uh, from the Mayor, uh, Mayor Ed Lee directly about why he thinks it's important. Um, we also had a big announcement last week about public Wi-Fi being uh, launched in 32 parks around the city in all uh, neighborhoods in, of our city. And at that press conference, Supervisor Farrell himself said that uh, connectivity and specifically Wi-Fi is not a, a luxury, that it is a right and a utility. And so you can see that that is the sentiment of San Francisco, is that this is uh, entered into the primary conversation of public service that the city feels um, is our obligation to deliver to our citizens. So with that, I'd like to, to run a quick uh, video that we shot uh, with our recent Wi-Fi launches, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, where we're headed next. Uh, in the form of Ruckus Wireless, uh out of the valley at, uh, uh, along uh, with uh, layer 42. Uh, both of them uh, gave us some very extensive uh, equipment uh, to use, but also gave us some great guidance as to how to do it in a sustained way. And so that combination of the public-private partnership was another complement of how our Department of Technology is working. A government should work with the private sector and particularly on technology to do these sorts of exciting things and uh, it complements all the other things that we're trying to do to use technology in a positive way. San Francisco is one, one of the greatest cities in the world and it uh, certainly gives Rutgers a lot of credibility to be able to support a service that works for San Francisco. Wi-Fi will become like a utility uh, just like power and water and as such, it, it has to be pervasive. It will be available, I think, in overtime in all the public venues. I see them in Oakland, um, but I'm here on Market Street a whole lot, and uh, not really very familiar with the area, especially this part of Market Street. So being able to use my smartphone and being able to navigate around is really, really helpful. And uh, I appreciate the fact that the city is actually doing its civic duty and providing a connection for everybody. So thank you to the city. They would have had a huge manpower effort. There were three different shops and crews involved in this. It was the overhead line crew, then all the overhead work. There was the underground cable crew pulling all the fiber optics and the network cable. And there was the radio shop doing all the synchronization, turn on, and troubleshooting. Each one of those shops put in at least three months worth of man hours times six or eight people on each shop. We're going to have a lot of issues with the APs, which are the access points for the system, and we really are not to basically a very sophisticated antenna. They're what broadcasts the signal out to the street that people can pick up on their mobile devices. We can use a public hyper partnership to hit up the other major corridors. I'm looking at uh, corridors across the city where people traverse, where there's a huge amount of uh, small businesses, neighborhood groups, transit corridors. 
uh, where there's housing for everybody, but they just want to get online with uh, their education hopes or uh, connecting with their friends and with their, uh, or uh, just looking for a job. I think we have a lot of people around the city, whether they're veterans or others, that uh, they're not just on Market Street, they're all over the city, and they just want that connectivity. Market Street's very old, and other systems are very old, and Market Street has been dug up several times since they've been installed. We tried to deal with damage conduits. Uh, we did have to run some link between conduit systems to link conduit systems so we could get the routes we needed to pull the fiber. Uh, and just 3.1 miles of fiber is a lot of fiber to pull in three months. So another issue was just actually getting the fiber to our shop, procuring it, getting it on the job. We pay a good amount of taxes in San Francisco. It, it seems like to ease the burden, if we all had access to Wi-Fi more or less when we're in the city center, uh, we wouldn't have to pay such egregious cell phone bills and people's efficiency is broken down into one way to connect to the internet. Um, Free internet and free Wi-Fi is a way forward for all of the challenge uh, uh, divisions of our cities across the country, not just for San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, we're all saying the same thing. We want our families or kids, particularly from uh, backgrounds where there used to be a digital divide, to be connected up so that people can look for jobs or uh, gain the skill sets that we want for the 21st century. It's all about the futures of our city and making sure we take care of the 100%. <coughs> So what you heard there was uh, the, what the real challenge is for us as a municipality uh, when it comes to delivering broadband connectivity and, and Wi-Fi. What we're commonly referring to as Wi-Fi because that's the medium that we're, that we're using predominantly, but it's really about connectivity. And what you heard there was the perspective of the mayor from the leadership and his need to, and my need uh, to support that, to bridge the various reasons and the various demands uh, for connectivity in, in such a diverse uh, group like a, an entire city. You heard from a gentleman that doesn't even live here but comes here often and so clearly he wouldn't have his own residence to go to to connect and so having public access is useful for him while he's doing business activities and things like that. You heard from another guy who is a resident who is, uh, sees it as a way to reduce his own financial burden for uh, establishing his connectivity himself through cell phone bills or cable bills. And so uh, this isn't a matter of displacement. This isn't a matter of one technology being displaced by uh, free public access. This is a matter of uh, responding to the increased demands, the diverse demands of a population that wants and needs access, uh, both in commercial corridors, in public spaces like parks, in uh, underserved communities and neighborhoods. And so that, that's what we're, really, what we're really trying to accomplish is that broader connectivity landscape. So along those lines, this project is really intended to close, close that digital divide. And it's not always just about delivering Wi-Fi access to underserved communities. Like I said, it's, it's delivering it in spaces where other people uh, want to and, ha and can make use of it. Um, we're looking to expand this further uh, and make sure that we take advantage of the various uses that people uh, have for Wi-Fi. And, and in order to properly respond to those uses and those increasing demands, performance has been a big issue for us. We've wanted to make sure that it wasn't just that it's free, that we can expect people to expect little of the system. So we're delivering it as a, as a utility, but no different than electric, water, or sewer. Uh, you, you're not going to accept um, less than satisfactory performance. And so we've done a lot of effort to really make sure that it's completely ad-free, that uh, it's one-click access. We've done away with our complicated log-on authentication processes. So once you're connected, we let you on. We don't monitor um, any uh, unique uh, user information. It's all an uh, anonymous and uh, high-performing. So. What's really important are the next steps. And this was alluded to a little bit in, in Chris's presentation, 
where he showed some charts for the potential future uses. And I think we're all very excited about what we can do with the Internet of Things, what we can do with different uh, multimedia or online applications. But first and foremost, we need the pipes in place in order to deliver the water. So what Wi-Fi is about for a lot of people is, to, is the need that they have today, the stuff we've talked about already. Connectivity to the internet so they can pay their bills, so they can do research, so they can apply for jobs online. The things that are very front and center here and now. And so it's easy to get a lot of people to support and understand it when you're speaking in those terms. But frankly, my job uh, and the mayor's is to think ahead and to see uh, down uh, to the next horizon. And so what Wi-Fi is for us, really, and broadband connectivity in general, is the pathway to being able to respond to the demands of the, of the constituency and the public in the future. And so we really want to make sure that the, the system is truly pervasive, that it, very, it performs very well, and that it's built in a way that's sustainable and reliable going forward. We really see uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, we really see... Uh, those sorts of machine-to-machine -machine demands and people-to-machine demands uh, increasing the, the, uh, the demand on the system for performance uh, growing exponentially going forward. I came from a conference where it was, uh, there was a slide that a, a guy presented that was really telling to me in that the, this was actually the CIO of Oracle and he was showing a slide that showed the exponential growth and adoption of mobile. And it was, I think they measured it every two years. And this goes back to 2006, I think. And the demand went, it increased over those two years by 100%. And the experts, many of which may be in this room, so I apologize if I offend anybody, but the experts predicted that it would grow in the next period by something like 12 or 14%. And then they measured it again, and it had grown by 100%. And then they asked the same experts to predict the next period of time, and they said 12 or 14 percent. And then they measured it again, and it was 100 percent. And they asked them again, and they said 12 or 14 percent. And then we measured it again, and it was 100 percent. And so the, the point being there that it is so difficult, even for those of us who understand it intimately, how ex what, what exponential growth really means. So that's the, the type of, of uh, that's the type of anticipation we're trying to think of. We're trying to think of what are people going to need and want that I can't even get my head around today and make sure that we build this in a way that lets us expand and react to those demands as they, as they come to us uh, front and center. And one big, one big uh, piece of that is Hotspot 2.0 and Passpoint. And so Vijay and the city of San Francisco uh, and San, San Jose um, we're a, a little bit pioneering in this regard in that we uh, created the Hotspot 2.0 partnership between our communities. Um, and since then, we've expanded it. So we've added uh, the River Thames in London to our network, and others are calling us, I think, pretty right. If they're calling you as often as you're calling me, it's pretty regular that they want to get, there are other communities around the world that want to get um, connected in our agreement. And that lends itself to this exponential factor that I'm, that I'm just describing with regard to mobile adoption. Because as I add people, as people call me and I add those cities to my network, VJ benefits and vice versa. And so you can see how we're, we put ourselves in a position to exponentially grow, at least with regard to our roaming and our interconnectivity uh, going forward. Um, and it also adds this, the whole layer of security, um, seamless use, uh, our, our focus 100% is the usability of the user experience. So we really want to make sure that this is something that is meaningful and useful to the everyday person uh, that's walking on Market Street or visiting a, a park in San Francisco um, or a park or a public space in San Jose. So with that, um, I'm happy to, if we're at, a, I don't know if we're in a position to take questions or if we're just going to go into our Okay, so with that, Chris?